for the first time on this trip, we're gonna be taking a bus to the next city. We're gonna be taking the bus to Brighton. In the final leg of our tour through the UK, we are heading five hours away from Bristol to Brighton. So far we've been on trains and even a ferry, and this is the first time we're taking a coach to our destination. Partly there, we're making a little stop here at the Heathrow bus station, but we're still on our way to Gatwick before heading over to Brighton. Getting in your jumping jack for the hour, so you get your standing goal. Yeah, I'm trying to get my standing goal too on my Apple Watch. So I didn't run, here's my run in London. I'm trying out for the London Marathon, which I got rejected from the lottery twice. Despite hitting a little bit of a traffic jam driving away from London Heathrow, we are now here at the Gatwick South Terminal, while waiting for our last bus to Brighton. I know, it's late, but I'm just glad that it's here. There was some traffic on the motorway, so our bus arrived late. However, these buses usually are on time, so I'm going to blame it on the heat wave affecting transportation like I had been since we left Cardiff. This is impressive that it's able to go down these narrow streets. We're running behind by 40 minutes, but that's okay. At least we made it to Brighton, which is our last stop here in the UK. I'm not in India. I'm in England. Welcome to Brighton. It looks like a postcard from India, but really, we're here in Brighton. The first thing I noticed from the bus was the Royal Pavilion, which was built by King George IV. He used it as a seaside retreat and had wanted something extravagant. Let's just say it was cultural appropriation before it became a term. What was popular back then is still popular today. Brighton became known for its fashionable seaside squares during the Regency era. Look at this architecture. Located about two hours from London, Brighton is reminiscent of a Victorian-era beach town for city dwellers to escape to on the weekends. Right away, you can tell the city has a whimsical nature to it. We checked into our hotel, but since our time in Brighton was short, we immediately headed out to check out the town. And why look at that, it's another square. Behind the Royal Pavilion is the Royal Gardens, which is worth a quick walk through. The Lanes is an area where there are narrow streets. There are plenty of shops, restaurants, and pubs around here. Between these two pubs is the narrowest and oldest street in Brighton. Wow, see how narrow the street is? It's called the lane. Because it's only like one person through at a time. Brighton is known for being an LGBTQ plus friendly city. I would rank it up there with New York City, San Francisco, West Hollywood, and Palm Springs in terms of its fabulousness.
Another thing Brighton is famous for is its music scene. The movie Quadrophenia that was produced by the band The Who was filmed here and gives us a glimpse of how the city was central to the development of mod culture and music. I actually went back and watched the film and was thrilled to recognize some of the shooting locations. After dealing with the heat wave for the past few days, what we really wanted to do was to go to the beach for the ocean breeze. Hmm, this looks eerily familiar to Santa Monica Pier or Venice Beach. It hits a little close to home. The Brighton Palace Pier would give the San Monica Pier a run for its money. Then you wouldn't have any change to play any of the arcade games though. Here's what I've never done at the Santa Monica Pier. Go zip lining. It looks like you get a decent amount of hang time. Another thing that Brighton is known for is the vegan vegetarian food scene. We're not vegans, but we did enjoy this porchetta pizza. I don't know how they did it, but everything about this chocolate pizza was vegan. Good morning. It may look like the Santa Monica here, but it's not. We're actually in Brighton, England, and we're gonna go for a run. After our 5k run on the boardwalk, we grabbed breakfast. This time, it was healthier than all of the full English breakfasts we had been eating during this trip. I'm trying to hurry up because I don't want to miss my flight. I don't have any luggage with me, but that's okay because the flight that I'm taking is actually the British Airway I-360. This is British Airways and we actually had to go through security like you would at an airport before getting onto the attraction. Hey look, it's a passenger lounge. I wonder if our credit card's good for this place to wait before your flight takes off. Ah, this is a really cool waiting lounge. Look at that. You get a beachside view. It's a view of the former West Pier. At one point, Brighton had three piers, but now it only has the Palace Pier being operational. It's time to queue for boarding as the platform is being raised from the lower level. Guess you don't have to fight for a window seat. Looks like all the seats include access to the bar. There's free Wi-Fi on this flight. Can't say that about other flights. And guess what? I'm gonna be checking.
checking in on our flight back to Los Angeles. Well, on this flight. Oh, we're taking off. You get spectacular views of the city from high above. Here's the Palace Pier. There's Regency Square. Exit through the gift shop. Unfortunately, it's not duty free. The North Lane is another neighborhood known for its shops and cafes. Not all of Brighton is beaches and shopping. I know, it doesn't look much like a gardens, but this is what happens when you got climate change and a drought. It's our last night in the UK after traveling for almost three weeks and we wanted a British dinner. How about celebrating with a bowl of olives, some fancy cocktails, a baked camembert with some chips, the star of the meal was the seafood pie along with peas because hey, it's the UK and they like their peas. We get the Etten mess, and it feels like we're in the Great British Bake Off. It's our last morning in Brighton. It's a little drizzly, but hey, this is what happens when there's a heat wave this weekend. It's all right. We're gonna get in a quick little run before heading to the airport. One more look at the Palace Pier. It feels like I'm in the movie Quadrophenia. Our last breakfast in the UK, courtesy of Marks and Spencer's. Thank you. That's because we got to go catch the bus. Brighton is its own little world and definitely different from any of the other cities we visited in this series. Never normal Brighton. You certainly lived up to your slogan. <laughs>